New Owners Quick Start Webinar. My name is Karen Grant and I'll be your instructor today. So all of you are either new owners or you want to refresh your course or sometimes we have new owners that um, have their employees watch. So any of that is fine. All of that is fine. We're very happy to have you. And we're going to get right off started and I've switched things up um, I do this now I didn't used to do this so if you've watched it in the past. I want to talk about the change in hardware requirements that is coming in early 2020 so Windows 7 is being discontinued service on that or uh, updates on that is being discontinued by Microsoft and what that means is that you're going to have um, can you may have vulnerability in security and issues that come up with Windows 7. So I'm not telling you, you immediately have to run out and buy a Windows 10 computer, but I'm saying that sometime over the next four or five months, you should update or get a new workstation for your master computer. Now, if you're a brand new store and you've got brand new stations, okay, that's obviously not true. But if you have purchased an existing store and the, the workstations are older, that's what you're gonna to wanna to look to do. And usually what we recommend in, in sequence is you get a brand new master workstation and then your current master workstation becomes an auxiliary if you have a net network setup, which I would say 90% of our stores do run in a network setup. So they have more than one station running Postalmate. Um, however, you're going to want your auxiliary stations also ideally running Windows 10. So you're going to have to make some choices. Are you going to buy all new computers or are you going to upgrade the operating system from Windows 7 to Windows 10? That's not usually recommended because a lot of times the processor and RAM and everything is old and built for Windows 7 and isn't strong enough to support Windows 10 plus all the updates Windows 10 is going to make over the next few years plus Postalmate plus anything else you're running on that station. So you may need to um, update those computers. Most stores can get away with having only two workstations in their store. It would be a very busy store. When I say very busy, I mean like mm, three quarters of a million dollars a year and up that would need three or four workstations. And we certainly have them. We have, have stores that have multiple workstations. And it's not wrong if you have more, more than two. Um, you may have a larger store or some other needs for it. That's totally fine. I'm just saying on average. Uh, two stores, two stations for a store works really pretty nicely. Okay, um, training opportunities. Now you're you're new to Postalmate and you want to learn how to use it. And of course, all of you want uh, one of us to come visit your store and spend half a day with you training you in person. Well, for an arm and 14 legs, we can do that, but that's not typically how it rolls. Um, so we have offered you a, a wonderful training library that allows you to learn things on your own time when you want, when it's convenient for you. I recognize that this webinar is in the middle of your workday and is not necessarily convenient to you. So that's why we record these and record all of our webinars and make short videos. The webinars are all long as I'm long-winded, so they always are sit tend to be around an hour long. If you don't want to listen to a whole long one hour recording of a webinar, I don't blame you. Although it has some good information sometimes you may want to access. But if you need to know something specific, uh, there, the short ways to get that information are tech notes, which are available on our website. And those are anywhere from one to five pages. They're very picture intensive. So almost all of it will be pictures with very few words, just showing you what the screens are going to look like so that you can set up each portion of the thing that you're trying to do or operate, do the thing that you're trying to do. The other way is we have short videos on our website and these videos are anywhere between, gosh, I want to say the shortest one might be 15 or 20 seconds long. So really short. And then the longest one might be six or seven minutes long. Um, some of the more, the longer ones would be like rates, how to set up rates. So those are broken down into four segments, your basic rates, add-on rates, surcharge rates, insurance rates, and each of those might be anywhere between three and seven minutes long. So, um, but you need to know that information, of course, as you're setting up your store, you're going to be making those changes. So we encourage you to sign up for live webinars, and we do about 20 a year, I'd say, live webinars. Um, look at the recorded webinars, look at the recorded videos, and get the tech notes and look at the tech notes. And also on the page with the tech notes on our website, there is one tech note and it's not, it's not really a tech note. It's called the getting starters, getting started users guide. It's about 70 or so pages and it's soup to nuts, everything in setting up Postalmate from scratch. So it's a really good thing to have and print out. 
And then we do offer um, national training. We do regional workshops throughout the country. Um, our last, I stopped said I'd stop saying, um, sorry. Our last training this year will be in Southern California in Anaheim on September. No, November, sorry, 16th and 17th, November 16th and 17th, if you can join us there. We will be um, setting up our schedule for next year. This, the regionals that we will be going to next year will be announced usually around the first of the year. So look for that and see if there's one in your nearby community. And if not, maybe you want to go on vacation to an area where there will be one. And then the last thing I want to talk about today, um, pretty much last thing before we get started, is your communications with Postmate, because I all, always want you to get the best support you can. So make sure that we have your current email address. A lot of you, when you signed up for Postmate, had a private email address that you used. Now you have a business one. Make sure we have that. Make sure that when you leave information for us to call you back, that you always leave your store phone number and your serial number. Your serial number can always be found, the first six digits, under help and about and we only need the first six digits, always tell us what the issue is that you're having or what the, and what station it's on. That really helps us. Otherwise, we triage, so it is not a first come, first serve when you call in to support. If you don't give us any information, you go to the bottom of the pile and everybody else gets stacked up on top of you that give us, give us uh, you know, tell us what's going on with their, their issue. So I don't want that to happen to you, um, but we need your, that information so we can properly place you to get a call back. So. We're going to get started. Let's go right to Postalmate. Oops, sorry about that. Let's. We're not doing Q and A yet. Um, so when you open up Postalmate each day, I want you to fresh launch it from your icons, either your icons here, your icons on your taskbar, or some of you actually go to the Start menu and and do it. But you can set up icons. Icons are pretty cool. And then fresh launch every day. Ideally, you're going to reboot uh, your whole computer system once or twice a week at least. Um, make sure that when you do that that you leave time for Windows updates. Because sometimes when you reboot, you know, it comes in and says, oh, we're gonna install Windows updates whether you want them or not. And so, um, and we always recommend Windows Professional rather than Windows Home. There's nothing wrong with getting Windows Home except you don't get as much latitude or decision-making on your part on when Windows updates will occur. Uh, with uh, Windows professional, it allows you to have more control on scheduling when those Windows updates occur and they therefore they wouldn't happen just as you're trying to open your day or something. So that's why we recommend professional if it, at least get professional on your main main computer, which is usually your master workstation. That's that's always a, a, the best case situation. <clears throat> Sorry, froggy. Once you open Postmate, you can see on my Postmate screen, um, my whole monitor, Postmate is pretty small. Now, you've probably, because you're all savvy on computers nowadays, you know that you can right click on your desktop and go into display settings. And I don't want you to do that. Um, leave your icon and your font sizes and everything and Windows background, leave it as it is. But I want you to be able to make Postmate larger. I mean, it's probably your main functioning software and it runs your store. So why not have it as big as it can get? So to do that um, on Postalmate, you're going to go up to Tools, Postalmate Settings, and down on the left-hand side, look for Station Settings. And over to the right, it says Size of Transaction Screens. And when you drop this down, you're going to have several choices in here. And the number of choices are going to depend on your particular workstation. Postalmate looks at the graphics card that you has and gives you options based on the on how large or, or big of a uh, graphics card you have, the capabilities of that. So if you like when we travel and we use our laptop, we usually only have two options, big and small. Um, but on a standard workstation, a good workstation, you're going to probably have five options. I'm going to suggest that you go to the largest one, click Save. It will relaunch Postalmate. Um, once it does that, it's going to come out and be large. If it doesn't relaunch on its own and it just closes, <clears throat> then you can just double click on the Postmate icon to open it again. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Postmate will open up and you will see once it opens, it's a lot bigger than this little rectangle that you're seeing right now. Wow. Big difference, right? So that's what I, I think that most stores would want. And then once you launch Postalmate, click on the POS button down at the bottom left to, to launch CashMate. You can also click the CashMate button icon. It doesn't really matter which you do, but make sure that you do launch it and keep it open 
um, all day long in the background. If you close CashMate, then your transactions cannot go over to it when you try to move and go to CashMate. Um, they, it will stick them in the hold recall in that case. And then to open your cash day, you're gonna go up to file, open register day, and then enter your starting cash. If you want to count out your drawer for starting cash, you can just click on this little button here and count it out. If you already know how much you're starting with, you can just enter it and click OK. All right, so we're gonna go over to the basic Postalmate shipping screen and we're gonna do a quick package. And I know many of you are saying, well, I've been doing packages. I know how to do packages, I get that. We're gonna show you some things. I, I guarantee there's gonna be some things here you may not have noticed. So we're gonna click on parcel or document and we're gonna choose a from and that's your customer. And I'm just gonna choose, now, in this case, in this this last name, Grant, there's several people in here with that last name. You can put a space and then the first letter of the, of the first name, and it will narrow it down. So if you have lots of Smiths or Joneses in your computer, you can now find them. Uh, so just make sure you put a space and then start with the first name. Click Next. And then enter the zip code that you're going to. You can click Add to add a new uh, address. And by the way, if you click this button right down here, show only records for this customer, then it's basically becomes the private address book for the customer you already selected. So in this case, if I selected this, only addresses that Karen Grant has shipped to before would appear on the right. So that's their private address book. If you leave it unchecked, then all the potential ship tos in your database uh, will appear. So I'm gonna add a new address so that we can discuss some of the features of that. And usually I'm gonna add, by the way, let's, let's go back. Usually I'm gonna enter the, the uh, zip code first. And then I'm gonna click add. And I'll show you why I'm gonna do that. It's gonna ask me to select the town. And sorry, I'm a miserable typist. Here we go, and here's why. Okay, so this is called Address Autocomplete. It's an option that you have in your software. You may or may not have it turned on, um, but that is a feature that's available to you, and this helps you to select. You do have to be sure that the address is correct. Let me give you another example. In this case, it would be this one. If it was not correct, you could choose none of the above and continue typing in. I'm gonna give you a different, um, different address here with a different zip code so you can see kind of how cool this is. In this case, I'm going to use our head office. And okay, in this case, this here's our head office. Now watch what it does after I select it. It knows that this is has suite numbers. If it was an apartment complex, it would pop up here with apartment options. So that helps you to not make an incorrect selection and make sure that you get the apartment number or suite number when doing um, an address. And by the way, when you select this as a right, uh, the correct address, it automatically verifies online. So let's discuss this verify online. The verify online feature that we have for you is through Indicia's dial -a zip program. What it does is it looks for this address and makes sure that this is a correct address according to the post office and only the post office. UPS and FedEx may disagree with the post office on whether this is classified as residential or commercial. And I'll give you a prime example. If this were going to Mark Brannon at a nursing home, the post office would come have this come up as commercial. But for FedEx and UPS, that would be a residential address and they would charge the residential fees or give you only the residential discount. So it would be a different rate. So you have to know um, whether or not it is a residence or business too. You kind of have to probe. Now, getting a little bit deeper into that classific classification as residential or commercial, if it's going to the office manager of the, the uh, nursing home, you would probably say something like this, office manager. And that would indicate that this really is going to the business office of that nursing home. But if Mark Brennan was my grandfather, uh, and he lived at the nursing home, then uh, leaving it like this, UPS and FedEx will always classify this as residential. So you kind of have to make a judgment call there. Uh, and then uh, phone number is just so you clearly understand, 
an ad, a, a ship to address and a ship from address is never complete without a phone number. 10 digits, it always must be 10 digits, not 11, not nine. If it's an international address, pretty much all international addresses are 10 digits if you include um, their area, what they term as their area code, they call it something else, I'm sure. Um, you may have to omit the country code. There's no reason to have the country code there on there. If for some reason it doesn't equal 10 digits, if it's less, put zeros in front of it until you can get to 10 digits and that way it will be accepted. Uh, just as a heads up, Indicia right now will not accept an international address for mailing at all without the full 10 digit phone number in there. If you don't have a phone number for the recipient, uh, put the phone number of the sender in there. So at least there's a phone number in there. It doesn't matter whether you smash them together or put dashes. Um, some, some carriers are not overly fond of dots, so dashes or smashing it together is fine. Um, and by the way, just as a heads up for those of you who are maybe have seen this before, I don't always hit this one. Sometimes you have that customer that comes in that's sending to themselves. Maybe they're on vacation in your area and they picked up some things. Uh, so they gave you the whole, their return address on the previous screen. Then they come here and you say, okay, what's your, where are you sending this? And they'll say, well, I'm sending it to the address I just gave you, to my home, which is in Iowa or wherever it is. You can click down here on the lower left, copy from customer, and the address that you put in as the from address will also become the to address. So you don't have to ask them for information all over again. Kind of a cool feature. So we click OK. And we get this updating commits for zip code and how long that take it takes is largely dependent on your internet network speeds. So this screen here for weight generally will not pop up on a store's screen. You can have it pop up. I do because I don't have a scale attached, but if you have a scale attached, there's no reason to have this screen pop up and you can turn this off. This screen, um, the packaging dimension screen, I often tell people is the most important screen in Postmate. This is where if you do everything right, everything works wonderful. And if you skip something or do things wrong, you can get charged big ding fees is what we call them, where you get dinged on your bill when you didn't expect it. So let me share with you some of the ways that you can protect yourself. First of all, let's start at the top of the screen. Is it in generic packaging, which is any brown, white, blue box, whatever, um, that they either bring in or that you pack in your store and sell them? That's generic packaging. So that's 90 plus percent of your pa your shipments are gonna be generic packaging. Carrier branded packaging is packaging supplied by the carrier at no cost designed for specific types of shipments. Usually they're premium services such as air services, express services, or flat rate services. So let me give you an example of that. Um, a, a post office flat rate box, that would be an example of carrier branded packaging. But also, let me pull up here. Here's an example of the FedEx uh, carrier branded pack packaging. UPS has similar ones. Of course, they're brown. DHL has some, et cetera. So this would all be considered carrier branded packaging. Any other packaging would be considered generic packaging. When we're entering the outer dimensions of the package um, or the parcel, we need to, to measure every single side. And don't ever, and if your employee does it, make, you know, have a quarter jar, make them pay a quarter in the quarter jar or something for pizza. Uh, it's, it's a bad, bad behavior to enter the dimensions that are written on the bottom of the parcel. That is unacceptable. And those are the interior dimensions, not the exterior dimensions. And quarter of an inch can make a huge difference in a price. In fact, I'll just share with you that there are cutoffs um, some of those cutoffs are for large package surcharges, which are, I don't, gosh, I don't remember. I want to say they're $38 plus fuel surcharge if it applies. So you're looking at a $40 difference or more um, if you miss it by a quarter of an inch on that cusp, if you will, between regular size and large package surcharge. And then they have something called an over the limits charge. And each of the carriers has that. And the maximum size limits that you can accept is 165 inches length plus girth. And if you have a package that is close to that, I'm really going to recommend that you cut it down and make it 164, 163, or 162 instead of 165 length plus girth. And the reason for that is packages do change shape some when they're traveling. If something, if it gets squashed or something like that, gets dented, it can it can bulge, it can you know end up different, and that can change the length and girth. Believe it or not, the the fees for going over 
the over the limits charge are several hundred dollars. I want to say one carrier, and I can't remember exactly which one, the fee this year at Christmas time is over $800 if you make that mistake. So uh, anytime you get a really big box, um, be careful of that. And, I, and when I say really big, I mean like 30 by 30 by 24. That's a really big box. Uh, so when you enter the dimensions, most stores round up in dimensions. So if it's a 12 by 12 by 12, they go to 13, 13, 13. You can do that. You can enter exact dimensions if you want. That's fine. Postalmate knows all the rules. So if you were to enter 12 and a half, it knows uh, for that carrier it need, that you select that it needs to round it up as, a, as opposed to round it down. So the, for the most part, with one exception, and that would be cubic rate, uh, the carriers all agree that if it's 0.49 inches, or lower, they round it down. If it's 0.50 inches, they round or higher, they round it up. So again, entering a 12, 12, 12 if it is a 12, 12, 12, and it and measures it as 12 and a half, 12 and a half, 12 and a half, you can enter 13, 13, 13 instead of instead of 12 and a half, 12 and a half, 12 and a half. That's fine. It is easier, I have to admit. I want to share something with you. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to actually do a six by six by six, and I'm going to show you why it's so important that you um, enter dimensions correctly. Um, also, down here on the bottom, article not in standard container. Uh, if your item is not in a standard box or bag, let me repeat that. If it is not in a standard box or bag, you must check mark this item right here. And you must go through the rules for the carrier and determine uh, what's a standard box or bag and what would apply. And this invokes the additional handling for uh, the con container type. So you would need to enter that and give you some examples, bucket pail, wooden crate, metal toolbox, Rubbermaid container, suitcase, tire, a big rolled up rug in a plastic sack, all those kinds of things would be article not in standard container and you'd need to check mark that. The padded envelope or soft pack option down there is for cubic priority mail cubic rates only. So only check that if, it, if you're doing priority mail cubic rates in, a, in an envelope. Um, so, and you may not have this option. This option only comes up if you have certain post office um, uh, wholesale pr price groups selected with Indicia. So we're going to go to the next screen. Any declared value, enter that here. By the way, a great way to ask about this is stay, rather than say, um, uh, do you want any declared value on this? Or do you want any insurance on this? That's kind of like saying, would you like to spend more money on this? And of course, their answer is always going to be no. So I'm going to recommend to you that you say, how much is this package worth? And then once you enter that, if it's over, a, 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 never enter something automatically. Don't come in here and just, if you were taught to enter 100 all the time, stop doing that. Just stop doing that. Only enter what they tell you or leave it blank. You are always covered for the minimum offered by the carrier, regardless of whether you leave this blank or put something in. But if you put something in like $20 and they, after it gets lost and afterwards they decide it was worth 50 and you sent it UPS or FedEx, they're only going to cover 20. They're not going to cover the 50. So leaving it blank is much safer than entering something below 100 and leaving it at 100. Well, gosh, some carriers actually charge for that first 100 DHL and post office. So you need to be very careful for that. So again, leave it blank unless your, your customer tells you exactly what value they want, particularly if it's over the free amount. And you need to learn from the carriers uh, which carriers offer how much free amount and how to handle that. No harm in leaving it blank if it's $100 or less. And then when you get to your rate comparison screen, I'm actually going to change this to a one pound package. Now, your screen could look like this. This is what we call the pro ship screen, um, or your screen could look like this. And this is what we call the wizard ship screen. Either one is fine. I personally prefer this one, especially when I'm teaching, because I have the ability on the left hand side to change all of the, all of the values so that we can experiment with different things but there's no right or wrong. So whichever you choose to use is fine. But what I wanted in particular, let's say we were gonna send this priority overnight. Um, and this is a one pound six cube. And I want you to notice that it is rated at two pounds here. And that's because the size, if I was thinking, oh gosh, it's a small box. I don't have to enter dimensions. And you were lazy or your employee was lazy and you didn't enter dimensions, you would be charging 55, 57, but in reality, you should have charged 56. So you missed out on some money here and it gets more drastic as you get bigger. So please always enter dimensions, international shipments especially, 
um, the difference can be pretty dramatic. So always enter your dimensions here on an item. So you get to arrange how your tabs display up here and what they're named. So you may take a note, take note of what mine are. If you like the way I have them, you may not like the what I have written up here. You could make UPS first. You could make FedEx first. You could make any of these first if you wanted. I happen to like one called best services first or something like that. You you get to design what carriers and what services appear on each tab. For example, you'll see I have priority mail here, but I don't have other post office services showing. I don't want to show media mail here. I don't want to show parcel select ground. Those are lesser services, so I don't want them displayed on this screen, for example. That's my choice. You can set yours up to be that way as well. The, other, the only rule that you have to obey on these tabs and screens is that UPS cannot appear on the same tab as any other carrier. That's a UPS rule. Um, and so for Postmate to be certified by UPS so that you can use it, uh, we had to comply with that. So um, that's why it's not able to be on the screen. So if you want to look at a UPS price, you'll have to actually click on the UPS tab. So once you make your selection, you're going to go to the next screen. Actually, let's go back one screen. I'm sorry. I wanted to point some features out here that I missed. Once you make your selection, the logo will appear and it shows up here. The cost is up here in the zone. But over to the far right, you're going to see some numbers A, C, and D. And A, C, and D, again, is set up by you. So if you don't show A, C, and D on your screen, you may want to take your cell phone and take a quick picture of this so that you can uh, learn how to get that on. Let me share with you what the A, C, and D number are. The A number is your cost. So whatever you, as long as your postal mate's updated correctly and you have your correct wholesale price tiers in there, this will be your cost. It should match your bill within two pennies every single time. If you're using uh, ProPack, it includes the cost of your packing supplies. C number is the published rate. For post office, that would be what's charged at the post office. So if your customer went to the post office, they would char be charged $7.35 for this you're charged $6.95 for this. We're charging our customer $10.50 for this. That leaves the D number, and the D number is the dollar profit you're making. So that would be 1050 minus 695 should equal $3.55. So that's so you can quickly thumb through, thumb through things here and see which items you're making the most dollar profit quickly. That's really wonderful. Sometimes when you're trying to compare uh, services between UPS and FedEx that are somewhat uh, similar. Let's change the weight of this item <clears throat> and we'll see something similar happen with Priority Mail. So now Priority Mail, I'm making $7, FedEx $15. I still want to go to FedEx on this one. Let's go to 15 pounds and see what happens. So now my Priority, look how close my Priority Mail and my FedEx Ground are to the customer. It's only less than $3 difference between the two. And with Priority Mail, I make $12 and when with FedEx Ground, I make $19. I would give them this price. And if they said, well, I really don't want to pay that much, I would give them a discount because I'd still end up making more money. So, um, but that's that's me. I, I'm always for making more money. Uh, so you, you can make your selection here. And then your time in transit shows for FedEx, UPS, DHL, that comes from the carrier. We have, we touch bases with the carrier services and they display service, server, sorry. <laughs> and they display um, the time in transit here. And while it's not 100%, I'll just tell you that up front, it's 99.9% .9 correct. But post office doesn't offer us any time in transit servers. So we allow you to enter words uh, on your screen. And so I'll, I'll go to my U U P uh, US mail tab so that you can kind of see the kind of words that I've put in uh, to help me to know what to say to the customers. Because these kind of prompt you and help your customers to make decisions. And by the way, on the top, when you're choosing tabs, I've always changed it. Instead of saying U USPS, I say US Mail because it's so easily confused with UPS. UPS, USPS. So that's why it says US Mail. Just a choice, an idea. So I'm going to select USPS Priority Mail and I'm going to click Next. This next screen allows you to choose any add ons. I, by default, already have tracking turned on. So that's going to be a default. If I did want certified, I would have to uncheck the tracking because you can't have uh, two items with a barcode on the same package. So then I click the next button. And anything else I wanted to look at here, I could look at and then click 
finish. But before I do that, one more thing. Um, you could give a discount on this screen. You don't have to do it here. If you're offering a discount, you can do it at the POS or CashMate system. There are seven ways to create a discount in Postmate. One of them is in the Postmate shipping side. Six of them are in the CashMate POS side. So uh, if, if you want to do it from here, you go down here to the little red minus sign, and that allows you to enter a dollar discount. So if I wanted to enter $3 off, I can do that and you can see it displayed in red. It does not do percentages on the shipping side, only dollar amounts. If I decided not to offer that discount, if I click it again, it goes away. So that's how you can do a discount from the shipping side. Once I click finish, it's gonna send the data to the carrier and then the carrier sends the label back to Postalmate and it goes out of your label printer and you pull that thing off and plop it on the package and tape it up and off it goes. And you, uh, you won't get a screen like what I'm showing here. This is for demonstration so that I can show you what those, your uh, label options are that come up. Now, it goes back to the shipping screen. Why does it go to the shipping screen instead of CashMate POS? Well, because it thinks you possibly could have more shipping to do for the same customer. So if this is the final package, or if they only have one package for this customer, what you're gonna do is click on the POS button down in the lower left side. And that transmits the data from the shipping side to the cash register. Now bear in mind, your CashMate has to be open. If you had closed out CashMate at some point in the day, then it couldn't move it over to there because CashMate's not open to move it into. So let's watch what happens. If I click, click on CashMate, you can see it's not here. If I click on PostalMate. And so I want you to get in the habit, instead of using the bottom bar buttons as I just did, get in the habit of always using the POS button on the shipping side and the, and the ship button on the POS side. I'll show you that in a moment. So let's click the POS button. And there the data comes over to the, the CashMate side. So going back and forth, we're always gonna use the ship button and the POS button to get back and forth. So now we have our data here and you can add other things. Maybe they wanna book a stamps. Maybe they want also to buy a box. And so when you're entering your products and departments in Postmate, the one thing we often recommend that you don't enter actual SKUs for or barcodes for, and you don't place on your tabs here are your boxes. What we recommend you do for those is enter them as products and for the SKU, instead of using whatever barcode came with your boxes, enter just the size of the box. So if it's a 12 cube, you would enter 12, 12, 12 as the SKU. And that way, when you ring up boxes, you can click on enter SKU, 12, 12, 12, enter, and then it pops up. Much easier than hunting it down, looking here for the item. Much easier than turning a heavy box upside down to scan the barcode and then realizing, of course, you folded it on the inside flaps and it's not visible anymore. Much easier than clicking on find product, which you can do also to find a box. So that that would be set up just by entering your the SKU as the box size. So again, let's say this customer wanted another box, a 20 cube. We'll enter SKU, 20, 20, 20, enter. And there it is. Now let's say they wanted five, they said, oh wait, no, I didn't need just one 12 cube. I want five 12, 12 cubes. So now you're going to go five at SKU, 12, 12, 12, enter. And they said, oh, but now you have six total on the receipt. And sure enough, in fact, if you want to ever look at your whole receipt, there's this really faint little circle with an arrow down. If you click on that, it allows you to see everything on your receipt at once. And it, the arrow is right down here. So if you click on it again, it goes back. And you can always scroll right here using the scroll. So now I need to get rid of that first 12 by 12 by 12 box. So what I do is I highlight that and then I click void item. Are you sure you want to avoid it? Yep. Now it remains on your receipt and that is always going to be that way. Don't ask us to remove that. Um, yes, it shows that you maybe made a mistake or changed it, but that's a good thing. Um, that's, that's in accordance or in harmony with what American, uh, what's called uh, GAP, it's general accounting principles that are followed by the most, retail, most retailers, at least all the large retailers. Uh, for example, if you go to the grocery store or Walmart and they accidentally double ring something up, in fact, Costco's great at this, they double ring something up, 
um, they, when they void it, they'll, they'll often show it to you, but it will remain on the receipt so that you can see that it was, it was voided. So that's why we adhere to those principles. Um, now, what if you want to give a discount? So let's say we highlight um, this one right here and we want to give a discount of 10% because they're buying uh, more than one box. We can high, if we didn't already preset a discount up for that, we just highlight it. I'm going to give 10%, so I'm going to go 10. And then I have my discount set up on the discount tab. That's again something you can set up. And I'm going to go discount percent discount item. Now, if I did 10, let's highlight it again and enter 10, and I did dollar discount item, well, then it's only going to subtract 10 cents. Okay, so. If I wanted to give an actual, so you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to do a percent. If you wanted to give $5 off something, you could, or $3. Let's say, remember the shipping one of $25.43? I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to give $3 off on that one. $3 dollar discount. There we go, and it's showing up here under that price. So there you go, right there. Um, also, so if you do a large quantity of things, you and you can, let's say you did 500 at copies. So you have a lot of copies there. So that's easy to do. And the setup allows you to do discounts for larger quantities if you want. We call them quantity discounts. Um, let's see. Let's say that this customer all of a sudden said, oh my gosh, I left my wallet in my car. And you have a customer behind him trying to pay pay for some copies they made. You say, no problem, run out and get it. You can put this out uh, on hold and just make a little note in case you have several items in there like I do. And then it goes away. You can ring up the next customer. Your customer goes out to the car, gets their wallet, comes back in, recall. And now you got to look for that one. And fortunately, I said wallet here. There it is. And it populates all back on the screen. So easy peasy. Um, the hold recall will hold things for as long as you want. I don't encourage you to have tons of stuff that you keep on there forever. Uh, it's I, In a perfect world, you're going to have it empty once in a while. So uh, it is be, to be used as a temporary thing. It's not, uh, it's not designed for long-term holds. And it does clutter your database a little bit. It will, in the end, slow you down just a hair. Uh, so, you know, keep that relatively clean. Don't go crazy with it. I'm uh, going through my my quick list here. Oh, one thing I want to show you when you when you're over and we will get to some settings in just a moment. Um, let's go ahead and do a total. Now, if you haven't set this up, what will happen is you're wonderful with customer service. That's probably why you got into this business in the first place, which means you go yakety 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 yak with your customer and you're talking about your kids or the school or whatever, and you accidentally hit enter on your keyboard and cashmate. When you do that, we'll think it's cash and finish the sale as cash. And then they, of course, hand you a credit card and you go, oh, I already rang it up as cash. How do I do that? So there is a button and I will, I promise to show you how to set it up where you can force Postal Mate to not finish when you hit the enter. I'm clicking enter and nothing's happening. In fact, if I go over here and click finish, nothing's happening. It wants me, it's going to force me to choose something on this screen. I can choose just that if you have this, and you get to choose which of these type of items are on the screen. This is called tender types. Um, this is just cash. So if you choose cash, then you click finish. But this way, if they give you a visa, you can click the visa, run the visa. If it is accepted, then you can click finish and your sale is done. Once your sale is done, you have some options for receipts. A standard receipt is on a citizen receipt printer, and that's called standard and printed. You can also email them the receipt. You could just email them the receipt, or um, you could choose neither and have no receipt. And if you do choose to print it, you can print it to the standard receipt printer. You could also print it to an eight and a half 11 by 11 invoice on your report printer. By the way, the report printer, um, this would be a paid invoice. This is not the same as somebody having an invoice account with you and putting it on account. This is a paid invoice. Why do we offer this? Because when you do business with your local school system or government entity, they often require to um, that their people turn in full invoices for reimbursement rather than small receipts. So that's why this is an option for you. So, once you do that, you click OK. 
And when it emails to your customer, by the way, it usually will, they usually will have that on their smartphone before they leave your store. It's really fast. And then the receipt will print out and it actually prints out prettier than this one is. And you can have your logo on your receipt if your receipt printer supports that. Wow, I said a lot. Okay, so let's go in and take a look at how to do a few of these things. Um, we're gonna start in CashMate since we're here already. And I just want to start in Tools, Options, Reg Register Settings. Right here is where you set up the tabs that are shown behind it on the screen over here. You can name these tabs right over here. So you can see how they're named and yours are named probably tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four. So you can rename those. And then you can put on here whatever buttons you want. And we encourage you to, on the main screen, put the items that you sell most often. So you don't have to go flipping through the tabs looking for something all the time. Um, and then after that, the third, second, third, and fourth tab, specialize or customize to things that you sell a lot of in your store. Um, so that would be the, the products and departments. Cash re register functions are these buttons over here. You can arrange this how you want. And this is where I put all my discounts on one tab, see? And I have the quote feature turned on, which is a whole nother webinar that you can actually watch. We have it recorded and posted on our website. And then the general one. And then tender types, this is where you can choose what tender types to put here, but this is not where you force it to, to make a selection. I'm gonna show you where to do that right now. We're gonna actually skip all the way over to the top to the other tab at the very top. And the tender type force is right down here. Require for transactions so you don't accidentally hit the finish button and then they hand you the credit card. So I encourage all stores to have this. This is a, 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 almost a lifesaver here. Um, will help you, help you not to have those issues. So let's go back. We're back to register buttons. And now we're gonna go to receipt settings. And this is where you set up your receipts. Um, this is where you can assign your printer. This will be your citizen uh, receipt printer in most cases. And this is what you, where you decide what shows up on your receipt. And most stores do not show weight and dimensions. And the reason for that is that stores don't want their customers to go home and compare online, you know, go to upsforfedex.com and see what the, the shipment would have cost them. Um, there's no reason that you should have to have dimensions and weight on the receipt unless you want to. Postmates always gonna save that data and that data should always be safe. So you could always refer back to it should you ever need it in the future. Receipt layout here is where you're gonna have your store information. Always make sure there's an extra space below your last line. So there's a space between your header and your first product that you sold. Your shipping disclaimer will only print when you've done a shipment and moved it over to uh, CashMate. So that's when the shipping, and the shipping disclaimers are unique. We don't have a, one that we can give you. Uh, you have to kind of design your own. If you want your logo to appear on your receipt and your invoices, this is where you set that up and it's shown right here. And your credit card choices are here. Tendering types are over here. So you can have unique tendering types if you want. And if you want to set up to interface with QuickBooks Online, you can set that up right here. Turning on the quote feature is here, and then we're back to the famous other button. So that's kind of a quick drive through the, the setup in CashMate. Um, before we leave CashMate, I will also let you know there is an inventory system in CashMate and a full mailbox manager. So if you want to utilize those features, you can. We're going to go over to the shipping side of PostalMate and go through some of the setup here. First of all, I have a whole bunch of things on the left-hand side that you may not have turned on on your system. Um, other than the little screens that show you what a label looks like on mine, my Postmate and your Postmate is the same. So anything you see on my Postmate is available on your Postmate. And in fact, um, you can put your logo, your store logo, and replace the Postmate logo right here with your store logo. And if your color in your store is not blue, you can change this to something, either your color or a color that works with your color. So I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna go to the top to tools and Postmate settings. First, we'll start with store information. And in store information, this is needed um, to be filled out completely to register your uh, accounts with the carriers. Once you've done that, you're welcome to come in here and remove your name, which probably is placed in here. And a lot of stores put something like a great customer of, and that's because for UPS and FedEx domestic shipments, it is required that your store be the return address 
on every package. There are no options on what that, that's a, a FedEx and UPS requirement. So it's gonna pull from this data here. So instead of having your name as the part of that return address, you can say a great customer of mailboxes and more with your storage address. See how work that works? Um, there is an option to use your customer's name in here, but then it would not show your store name. So it would just say Mary Smith and then have your store address. That's fine too, if that's what you wanna do. Um, that once you make a change, be sure and click save. And then branding store group is where you can change the logo and the color. And here's the different colors we have available. Uh, carrier setup is where you're gonna register your carriers. Also, it's where you choose your tier levels and other options that they give you. Your tier levels are the wholesale rate groups and all carriers, um, UPS, FedEx, DHL, and Indicia have tier levels that you need to select. That's um, given to you, UPS and FedEx and DHL, uh, issue those to you, but with uh, Indicia, it's whatever program you signed up for, so it's account dependent. And then you set your shipping rates, add-on rates, surcharge rates, and insurance rates. All those are what encompasses your shipping rates. We have videos on our website on how to look at those. Um, that's a fairly long explanation, so I'm not going to get into those, but this is where you can set them. You can set a whole carrier. You can set some services for a carrier, such as second day and second day AM. I want this. Priority overnight, I want this. Uh, UPS next day, I want this. You can individually do that, and you can even get more picky. I want the, this, these rates, these weights and zones to be this margin. These weights and zones to be a different margin. I want this weight and zone to be X margin. You can do all of that independently. So as detailed as you would like to get. The famous shipping settings here is where we're gonna do a lot of work today. Uh, this first screen is the automatic prompts. So this is the wizard ship or pro ship and that's how your rate comparison screen looks. So you remember I had um, half, a, half of the screen showed the data, the second half of the screen showed the rates that I could charge my customer. And for a moment, I flipped to a whole screen of rates. So that's where you set this up. And then the prompts over here to the right, I recommend that you at least start with everything I have checked except weight. If your scale is connected to your computer, then you don't have to have the weight checked. But I encourage you to always enter the ship, customer, ship to, packaging dimensions and declared value at a minimum. And if you use ProPack, of course, the packing as well. Um, service display, this is what will appear on what screen, what tabs on your rate comparison screen. You have two rate comparison screens, one for generic packaging and one for carrier branded packaging. So the setup is a little different which, with each of those. So I'll, we'll take a look at generic packaging and you can see that some check marks are black and some check marks are gray. When a check mark is black, it means all the services offered that by that carrier will appear on this tab. When it's gray, it means that some services I've selected to not appear. So remember on my rate comparison screen on my main tab, um, I think it said best services. Um, well, it says, yeah, best services. It did not show media mail and it did not show parcel select ground. It only showed priority mail and then it showed FedEx. That This is where I did that. And that is why this is gray. Now, how do you select those services? Well, this is a little bit tricky because it's a Windows thing and it's a little bit touchy. In front of each of these boxes, you'll see a dash and then a little arrow or greater than sign. You have to actually click that arrow until it opens up. Sometimes it takes three or four or five clicks to get it exactly in the micro spot that they want it for it to open up. And when you do that, you can uncheck everything that you don't want to appear on that screen. And you can see all I have selected is priority mail for that one. Now, once I look at a different tab, let me close that, see how picky it is. Let's go over to UP, uh, US mail tab. I still have this gray. So now let's look at why. So on this one, click, 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 see. Okay, so on this one, I didn't want Global Express Guaranteed to show up, which is a service most of us don't want to sell. I didn't want Cubic Rate to show up, which is a service we shouldn't generally shouldn't select. So uh, that is your options there. And you can set this up however you want, but I wanted to give you some ideas on, on this. And the way I've got mine set up is to encourage higher sales. And that's the whole goal. Um, I'm not saying that you should not offer media mail or parcel select ground. I'm saying it shouldn't be on your main screen where you're trying to make upsell or make a big sale. If your customer specifically asks for those things, then yes. Please be sure, particularly with media mail, that the, the contents actually qualify as media mail. 
uh, the post office can and does inspect those packages to make sure, and they will come after you, not your customer. They will come after you because it's your account number that's being used to place postage on these packages. So be sure that you are in compliance with the requirements of the post office. Uh, carrier packaging, we're gonna go all the way over here to the other tab. And the famous other tab um, has a lot of stuff that you're gonna need to learn about. So this is where you set up your cert default search criteria. So this is for the customer, when you're entering customer information or entering the ship to information. Um, and then remember when I showed you the A, C, and D rates on the rate comparison screen, one was your cost, one was the carrier suggested retail rate, and one was D was dollar, dollar profit. That's set up right here. You may wanna take a screenshot of this or take your cell phone out so that you know on position one, you'll want it to say wholesale. Position two, you'll want it to start with the word published. And position three, you'll want it to start with the word profit to get the same thing as I showed on my screen, which works for almost all stores. That's usually the best setup. If you do want to use the address autocomplete that I showed you where it um, helps you to populate the address of a ship to and also the apartment number or suite number, that's selected right here. Over on the left-hand side, the most important thing I want to share with you is in dimensions, you have three options here. The only one I don't want you to choose is the first one. The second or third one is perfectly fine, but do not choose the first option here, please. One day I'm going to talk our development te team into removing that option completely. All right. Um, so once you make any changes here, be sure and select save. Anytime the green button is um, highlighted, select save. So you have other options here and we have a freight, which is a freight entry program. It doesn't book the freight for you, but it allows you to enter the information in Postmate, charge a markup and ring up your customer the same as any other package. Um, drop off settings so that you can uh, accept drop offs. Um, and that's by carrier. And by the way, when you do UPS, it is gonna want your credentials for your UPS access point login and you will need to enter that information here so that Postalmate can uh, log you into the UPS access point. For drop-off compensation, if you are um, access point eligible to receive compensation, you will not receive compensation unless that tracking number is in the access point program. In a perfect world, Postalmate, you would record it in Postalmate and Postalmate would transfer that data over to the access point fields for you we asked UPS to be able to do this. The capability is there on their side, but they said no, um, that they wanted you to log in and do it independently from Postalmate. I don't know why, but they said no. So that's the situation that we are in. Uh, ProPack settings, if you wanna use our uh, packing system, ProPack packing system, that helps you to select the correct packaging materials when you're packing up an item. And it will even allow you to pack it up at a later time in the day and charge your customer now and get them out the door, set everything aside, and then pack it up later in the day when you have more time. Sometimes that's really helpful. You will get things in your store that take a crazy amount of time to pack. And, and the worst was always China. Somebody will come in with a 50 piece set of China. And let me just tell you, that's a half day or more job um, to do. Packing, uh, you know, big pictures with picture frames and especially if there's glass involved, that's probably anywhere between a 15 minute and 45 minute job, depending on how complex uh, the picture frames are. So just so you know, you can do that and they don't have to stand there waiting if you don't want them to. Package receiving, so if you receive packages on behalf of your mailbox customers, there's a way to enter those. And by the way, there's a really cool quote feature in Postmate too, and that's um, back here at Shipping Settings. Um, oh, that's actually turned, sorry, it's turned on in CashMate, um, but it's right here. So if you want to quote your customer a shipping price and then print out an eight and a half by 11 for them to take with them, and maybe they have to take it to their boss or to their wife, which is their boss, right? And get it approved before they can come back and spend the money. Um, they can come back and Postmate will have saved the information for you. So you can just pull up that quote and start ringing it up. So that's really quite handsome. And then any other activities are in the famous other tab again. Um, and so other activities that you're gonna perform on a regular basis are as follows. You will make mistakes or your customers will change their mind. So you can void a shipment right here. When you void a shipment for UPS, FedEx or DHL, um, 
or post office, it does it immediately. You need to do it prior to the carrier day closeout or carrier pickup. Um, otherwise, you will not be able to avoid it. But the important thing to know is that with UPS, FedEx, and DHL, which we call our common carriers, um, if you don't, as long as you don't use the label, you are not charged for that label. So if you create a label by mistake, let me tell you, or if the customer changes their mind, I'm going to give you some, some good practices. Uh, especially this happens at Christmas a lot of times. Uh, you'll, you'll print out a label and then not use it for whatever reason. Take the label, peel the label off of the backing and stick the label on your leg. And yes, you're going to be walking around with a stupid looking label on your leg. But it reminds you that first chance you have to go in and void that label. That way you always get those labels voided. The moment a label is voided in Postal Mate, make sure to tear that label in half. That way, if you find any labels on your body, you know you have to void them. If you find any labels running around that are torn in half, you know they're already voided. And if you find any other labels around, you know that there's a package that needs to have a label on it and you gotta go find out what package didn't get their label. So um, that's kind of an easy way to, to handle that. Uh, you can find a package you've previously shipped in Postalmate. If you got that you purchased your store from an existing owner and maybe they were in business for six years, you can actually go find packages they shipped six years ago in Postalmate. So that's kind of cool. It saves the information forever. Every day when the carriers come to pick up at your store, you need to perform a carrier pickup for that carrier. And that's done right here. And you'll choose carrier pickup, select the carrier, go next, and follow the screens. You need to read the screens, especially in the beginning. You need to read those screens and learn what, um, what they say and close out each carrier. What that does, it does about seven or eight different things. It ends your reporting day. It rolls over your date so that this, your, uh, your rate comparison screen tells you the correct date that the package should arrive. Um, it up uploads information to certain carriers and or alternate insurance companies, uh, just a lot of important things. So, uh, it, but in the beginning, if you're a brand new store, you're gonna have days where, gosh, I didn't have any FedEx Express. And so you would click on this to do a carrier pickup and FedEx Express wouldn't be there because you didn't do any packages for them. You can still open for your next uh, carrier day so that you have correct dates on your carrier screen by going to the top to file carrier activities, open next shipping day, select that carrier, and then click OK, and it will roll your dates over for you. By the way, if looking in that same place, if you accidentally close a carrier out and um, you need to, maybe that carrier said, oh, I'm, I'm just going to take a couple of these and I'll be back later to get the rest or whatever, or I just came in to get a drink from your refrigerator, um, and, and you closed it out, you can roll the dates back by going to File, Carrier Activities, reset shipping day to today. And so that'll roll the dates back for you. When you do the carrier pickup, um, it may or may not produce reports depending on what selections you've made in Postalmate. FedEx tends to send a report on a fairly regular uh, basis. I wanna say it's for FedEx Ground when you close that out. That's controlled by them. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't come. Uh, the, uh, but the other one that's really important is your, your post office indicia scan form. And that will print out in your, your USPS or post office driver should scan that. Um, in fact, he's required to scan that if you offer it to him in 100% of cases, unless, there's always an unless, right? Unless your driver is what we call a rural route contract driver. We do have a few of those um, out there. Most of us don't. Most of us are in a city or suburb or serviced by our actual post office. How do you know? Well, are they in a full post office uniform? Are they in a full post office uh, vehicle? Um, if they are, then they're real post office people. If they're not, then they're probably a contract driver. They'll tell you. If you ask them, they'll tell you if they're contract or not. They're not required to scan them. Um, but your regular post office people are. If you take your, your mail to the post office, you can have it scanned there. Um, that will upload the data. It also validates your certified mails that you did through um, ship a package. And it also uh, uploads so that when your customers go and track their post office packages, it tells them that the post office is in possession of your packages. So now they know it's out of your hands and therefore you no longer have any liability for it. So that's pretty cool. Ooh, end of the day, you need to close your register day. We'll go to, to the POS and we'll go up to file, close register day. When we're closing our register day, all of the options will appear here on, the, on this list that we did today. So I didn't do American Express, so it's not showing up. I didn't do any 
checks, so it's not showing up. If you want to see what's available to show up, you can click on this button here and all of them will show up. But it's only going to show these two because that's all I had. I had cash and I need to cash that count that cash. So I click on the Sigma button and I just enter that amount. If you've counted it separately, you could manually enter that amount by clicking in here. Now, as owners, I'm going to say you're allowed to do this. It's your store. You can do whatever you want. But for your employees, I would highly recommend that you insist that they count it out each day using the Sigma button so that it's accurate as possible. And then Visa, um, again, you can enter the amount here, but if you use deposit slips, you're going to want to hit the Sigma button and check mark it. And you will have several here, and you can just check mark that you do have the little signed slip for each of these if you do keep signed slips. One of the one of the credit card companies no longer requires a signed slip. I want to say it's Cayenne. So you don't have to have signed slips for them, I believe. Okay, and once you do that, um, now you get an overage underage of zero, hopefully. Now I will say, I will just tell you, I worked my own stores for years and I'm pretty good at math. I rarely had a perfect day come out. And I think it was often because I give away pennies on occasion or round things down for them and stuff like that. So if it's not perfect every day, don't worry about it. If you ever wonder, is my employee thieving from me? Just throw an extra $20 bill in the drawer and see if they count and they're over by $20. If they're not, you have a problem. <laughs> and by the way, if you tell your employees you're going to do that ahead of time, they will be more careful. <laughs> you don't have to tell them, today I'm going to put in a 20. Just say, there will be times where I'll put extra money in the drawer. So uh, yeah, I, ex I do expect to see overages at, on occasion, and I'll know when those days are. That keeps them on, on their toes. Once you click close day, um, you're going to select yes. It's going to invite you to click or print your X report. And an X report prints for each workstation. So each auxiliary station will have its own X report. And that's because it is an accounting of the money that's in that particular drawer. Um, and that's expected in that drawer. So that's not a day end summary uh, for your store. That's a drawer specific summary for your, for your day. And so you're going to want to print it. I'm going to click yes. I don't have a printer hooked up to it, so I'm not going to get a, a, a receipt right now, or a, yeah, receipt printout right now. But that prints on your citizen receipt printer. And so once you've done that, once you've closed the day, you can no longer get the X report. So make sure you always print out that final X report. By the way, just a really good thing to know, uh, and I know I'm running over, so I'm almost finished, I promise. Um, for those of you ha who have auxiliary stations, if ever you have an auxiliary station that goes down for one reason or another, you can control it from your master workstation. Um, see right up here where it says master workstation opened? You'll have, if you have the auxiliary stations, you will have a drop down and you can drop that down and actually close your drawer from your master workstation. Bet you didn't know that. So it's kind of cool in, in events where you have a hard drive crash on an auxiliary station or something, you're not stuck in limbo. You can actually finish out your day and cash out that, close out that drawer. So kind of cool. So once we've closed our register day, now it's time to close Postalmate. And when you close Postalmate, you're gonna actually want to X out of Cashmate and then X out of Postalmate. It's going to ask you, and if you get this warning, I'm gonna be really not happy with you. And here it comes. Your postal mate has not been backed up for 21 days. If you get that warning, that's bad. You should always do a backup every single night. More importantly, you should back up to two locations and you can set that up in PM Utilities. And PM Utilities is a separate part of Postmate. So Postmate has to be closed. PM Utilities has a little screwdriver going and I, I'm circling it over on the left side of my screen. Let me see if I can pull that over a little bit so that you can see. Um, that, that's the back end that runs Postalmate, so to speak, It's kind of an easy way of saying it. Um, and it has some features in there like security features and other things, but it's also where you can set up your, your backups to, to back up to two locations. So let me give you a recommendation. Your first, first location should always be your C drive. Um, your second location takes a copy of the first one. So if your first one fails, then the second one will fail automatically. And that's why I want your first one to go ahead and back up to your C drive. Um, but your second one can be to a flash drive, an external hard drive, or the perfect place is a cloud drive. And let me tell you why. If um, a hurricane happens or a tornado happens and hits your store or a fire um, or a flood or whatever, it's gonna wipe out your computer and your external hard drive or flash drive that's plugged into it. 
if bad guy breaks into your store. It's going to steal the computer and the external hard drive that's sitting on top and the flash, flash drive that's plugged into it. So there's a lot of reasons that your backup would get lost. But if any of those horrible things happen to you and you had a backup in the cloud, let me tell you what would happen. And we've had stores that we've had a couple of stores that have had fires over the years, several stores in hurricane areas, one store recently, tornado. Let me tell you how that works because they always happens on weekends, right? So Friday night, bad thing happens to you. You call us on Saturday and say, oh my gosh, this and this happens. We, what do I do? We say, did you back up to the cloud? Well, yeah, I, actually I did. Great. Go to another computer, download your backup to a flash drive, plug a new flash drive into that computer, download the backup, bring a new computer into your store. Well, I don't have a computer. Well, do you have one at home? Yeah, I do. Bring that one in. And then we can get you up and running. And honest to goodness, um, we can get Postal made up and running on that computer usually in 15, 20 minutes. And then you and bad guys don't usually steal printers and things like that, but floods and tornadoes and hurricanes they definitely and and fires they definitely steal printers and things. So you may have to you know scramble to get the proper printers and what have you. But the point is, if you have spare equipment or can get your hand on spare equipment, you can be operational in 30 minutes after a disaster. And that's what we want for you. We, we want you to experience little to no downtime in an emergency. So that's the goal. So do make sure that you back up uh, to more than one location all the time and um, go ahead and let it, let it do its thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this continue doing its backup. And we're gonna go to any questions you have. And if you had thought of something while I was talking, and I know I did an awful lot of talking, please go ahead and type that in. I have a number of you on board today. We have 20 that showed up for this, which is pretty good. So um, let's see, is a phone number for the two customer absolutely necessary? Yes, um, pretty much all carriers want it. Some carriers require it. Some carrier services require it. Some carrier services don't. So my answer is yes, so that you're safe. Um, again, if you don't have a ship to phone number, um, even, okay, guys, yes, you can put your store phone number in there. You can put the ship from no, phone number, but let's say it's going to QVC and you have no idea what QVC's phone number is. Okay, they know what, what QVC is. Enter 555-555-5555. Now don't do that for everybody. Only do it for the cases like that and make sure you're, you're hard on your employees about that because it is important that um, the phone number, if it were like um, some addresses and the carrier needed to get to it, they might get really upset that you put all fives in there. So please do try to get a phone number in at any time when it's at any time possible. Any other questions for you? My gosh, no questions. Okay, well, we're gonna end the webinar. If you do come up with a question, just email it to support at pcsynergy.com. Bear in mind, our support times are longer right now due to two, rough things that happened. Indicia is still having some issues as they make changes in the background. So we are seeing regular Indicia issues each day. And if your printers are gone wonky, that is a Microsoft Windows update that has affected printers. We may or may not be able to get your printers working correctly. Um, please, when you call us, let us know if it's your master or aux station. Um, we will make every effort to get you at least one station that is working correctly so that you can continue doing business. Unfortunately, these printer issues with Microsoft, sometimes they're completely out of our control and you may want to touch bases with a computer technician. I don't recommend that you roll back the Windows updates, but I'm telling you that is an option. We will not help you do that. Um, that's not a function of Postal Make Tech Support. That would be between you and your private computer technician if that's something you wanted to do. Um, okay. Um, Ken, I, I, and I don't know if I said that correctly, um, I'm going to ask you to contact support on that. I think you're talking about uh, the slideshow for the um, sidebar. And so we didn't talk, talk about that today, so I don't want to get heavily into that to confuse anybody. But if it is the sidebar that you're referring to, uh, please contact our support team on that. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day. Have a great week. Make money. Have fun. Hope to see you in Southern California or at a regional close to you. Bye-bye, everybody.